let's start with your experience and what brought you to this mindset that you're at today. And what is your mindset, I guess? What is my mindset? Yes. <laughs> Are you pro-sex? Good no, question. Um, I love sex. <laughs> culture meaning like you described like you only ever have sex with one person it is your husband even if you are not directly harming that person because it's consensual and it's loving you are harming the kingdom of god at large i just think it's interesting that conservative christians are so concerned what certain people are doing in the bedroom you know like why are you obsessed with me because yeah. you're not in their bed <laughs> So instead of saying, here's how you should live your life to be a good person, it's if you don't do this and you don't do this and you don't do this, maybe you'll get into heaven. Yeah, and it's also not enough to be a good person. That that was repeated to me multiple. Jesus doesn't care if you're a good person. And that has to be so scary to have that kind of oh, God, mindset. Yeah. I mean, seriously, to, to, to come to that kind of conclusion that, oh man, this still isn't enough? This is directly from the mouth of God, uh, which is not true. It's incredibly human. I mean, I can't even begin to unpack that right this second. Well, yeah, this is going there, right? You bought a cat of nine tails and started lashing your back every time you had a horny thought. <laughs> exactly. I understand self-flagellation very well. And it is very common in the Midwest and, uh, you know, religious communities to get married to your college sweetheart. Well, and it works in the 1890s when there's two other people and a donkey in your town <laughs> and you get married at 14 and 15. And then you start looking at that right. donkey every once in a while. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> like longingly. Look at the ass on that ass. <laughs> yeah, when when and I broke up. You said his name again. I said his name again. Sorry. See, We're not in we'll, touch. We'll cut it out. When you and your he ex broke up. When my ex broke up. That changed everything for me. And I was like, oh, well, I'm not going to wait. And then what does that mean about me as a follower? of Christ, what does that mean about me as a, as you know, my value as a woman? If you had had sex with somebody who wasn't your husband, it's like you're a used product now, right? It's been taken out of the package, the value drops. The analogies abound. There was this video where like, there was a tomato and there were some pencils and at the end of it, it was just an obliterated tomato. And I was like, uh, that's terrifying. Is that my vagina? Is that my heart? We're not taught to understand ourselves as sexual beings in relation to other people. And so there's no like sense of judgment or even gauging how we feel about something. It's just like, you should feel this way about this and you should feel this way about this. And then you're just like, <laughs> they call me the human tomato. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> well, you know, I don't even, I don't want to talk to a girl at a bar anymore. And I'm like, why? And they're like, well, I don't want to get me, me too'd. And I was like, the fact that you don't know the difference between sexual assault and talking to a girl at a bar is the problem. <laughs> yeah, you probably shouldn't talk to us actually. <laughs> but it can also be this beautiful dance that is like, I believe brings us closer and probably the closest to the divine. But, but we don't know how to get to that like happy medium because we live in a culture of excess. I just got really nervous the more honest I would get. I just got so nervous. I was like, oh, people are going to read this and think I'm a total slut. She's a piece of meat. I'm sorry, not a piece of meat, a tomato. A tomato, right. I'm clearly a vegetable. <laughs> <laughs> right, I know, I get it. I, I understand. I, I know what I am. 